Hello everyone. Welcome to our first chapter of uh, tax accounting class and where we introduce the idea of our uh, of taxation and how we calculate income tax and take our look at form 1040. So let's jump right in. This will help uh, indicate the things that I feel are the most important from this first chapter. Uh, a little history here. Uh, notice that most income tax uh, returns are now filed electronically. There's been a lot of effort to in increase that. That makes it a lot easier for the IRS, a lot easier for the uh, individuals who are filing and a lot fewer mistakes and errors are made when it is filed electronically. So, and you see that there, there's somewhat of a history that we had an income tax that went away. We tried again. Uh, there's an amendment to the Constitution. They, the interpretation of the Constitution was that the income tax was not allowed, and therefore uh, there needed to be an amendment. There are still a few people out there who claim that that uh, amendment is not valid and that the income tax uh, is invalid and illegal. Those people uh, are considered to be dealing with a frivolous tax uh, process and are subject to penalties and interest uh, for not filing. Uh, so. That is not a valid argument for not paying your taxes. So, so as we look at the way that a tax structure works, we use in the United States a progressive tax structure. So what that means, is it sounds, it says the tax rate increases the tax base. Tax base refers to the income that is subject to tax. So what happens is as your income increases, you pay a higher rate. You'll hear people talk about being in a higher tax bracket. So we, uh, we have various tax brackets in the United States as our current system stands, uh, and each tax bracket has a different rate. Now what is true is that the first part of your income, the lower part of your income is still taxed uh, at the lower rate. So you don't have, as you move up the, to the new tax bracket, the entire amount is not subject to the higher tax rate. All right, so that, uh, meaning that calculating the tax on somebody's income is not as straightforward as we might think. It's not simply multiplying by a percentage uh, that is a pro pro proportional tax structure where the tax rate is the same regardless of income. Uh, Pennsylvania has a proportional tax structure. The tax rate in Pennsylvania on your income is 3.07%. It's the same regardless of your income. Your sales tax is the uh, same, whether you buy a lot of stuff or a few things. Uh, regressive tax structure uh, means that the tax rate decreases as the tax base increases. Means your income goes up, your tax rate goes down. Social Security it taxes that your employer uh, withholds, and we'll learn later is a self-employment tax actually is the same rate, it's a proportional system up until you reach a set, certain level of income for a particular year, and then any amount of income past that is the rate is zero. So that's somewhat of an example of a regressive tax, which where the income uh, goes up, the tax rate goes down. Now, an average tax rate just simply says that if we, you see how much tax you paid and you compare it to your taxable income, that's the average rate. 
So that kind of lumps all the different rates you might pay in a progressive kind of together and, and takes an average. Marginal tax rates are what they pay on, what somebody pays on the next dollar of income. So if you look at your income and what tax bracket you're in, if you make one more dollar, how much of that will you have to pay in taxes? That's a marginal. So when we talk about the idea of, of what decisions people make, they tend to make decisions from tax standpoint based on their marginal tax rate, meaning they are looking at the choices they make based on what the next dollar of income is and what how much that they'll have to pay in taxes. So someone in a 35% tax bracket uh, from a straight standpoint will be paying 35% on their next dollar of income. However, we'll see that there are some things that could make that higher or lower depending on what uh, deductions are applied. So it's the next dollar of income. This is the income tax formula. You take your income, you subtract your deductions, you get your taxable income, then you calculate your tax liability, then you apply what you've already paid or any tax credits, and you end up with an amount either you owe or the government owes you back, depending on whether you have paid more than you need to pay. So your tax return is, discer d d is where you kind of settle up with the government by comparing what uh, was withheld with what you actually owe. Now, an important distinction here is um, this income is done primarily for each individual uh, separately. So we don't file uh, and do this calculation as a family group or things like that, uh, at least on the individual side. We file a form 1040. There are no 1040EZs or 1040As that there used to be. There's only one form and then the schedules one through six are you use those depending on how complicated your return is. All right. They follow this income tax formula that we already presented. So we look at that for a second. This is the 1040 for 2019 and it gets revised each year. Uh, and this is the information you provide on defendants. Now this is where it gets uh, sometimes confusing people. They put their dependents, like their ch married couple may put their children here because that's important information that affects their tax liability. But that, that, that does not mean that that child doesn't have to file their own tax return. So their income and their uh, tax is determined separately from uh, mom and dad. The only people that file the group is a married couple married filing jointly, then they would together count their income as if they are one. So really married filing jointly is paying, filing as one. And then the types of income are listed. All right. And then there's deductions and then you have your settling up at the end. And you'll notice that as you see for instance, line 8A, adjustments to income from Schedule 1. So the schedules 1 through 6 are where you calculate amounts that show up on the 1040. So everything ends up here on the 1040 from the schedules.
So just a couple of things about how these things are reported. How do you know? Uh, know how much to report for your income. Wages are pretty easy. That comes on a form W-2. You probably received that with the age income in box one. Uh, interest income, you get 1099 INT from your bank. You've probably seen that uh, form. All of these uh, entities report their in your income you've earned uh, to, to you. They also are sending a copy of this W-2 to the IRS and the Social Security Department. So they match up what you report with what your employer reported. That's how they know if you left something off or make any, you know, or reported more than you should have. So that's the comparison. The computer matches that up very well these days. Uh, and we'll tell you'll get a notice if it doesn't match up. A couple of things while we're talking about unemployment compensation is kind of like lost wages. Uh, report it's paid by the government, so it comes from a 1099G for government uh, is where it's reported. Standard deduction is the only deduction we're going to learn about here in chapter one. Uh, it is one of two amounts, 12,200 for single, 24,400 for married. Okay, so you're gonna subtract one of those two uh, from, there's also a standard deduction for head of household, we'll talk about it a little later, but uh, subtract that to get your taxable income. Now, when we get into more complicated returns, we'll have to decide whether standard deduction is better or itemized deduction is better. But right now, we're just focusing on the standard deduction. Now, rather than calculating taxes, you can, for taxable income up to 100,000, use the tax tables. In fact, you are required, technically, uh, to use the tax tables to calculate the tax. Now, tax tables, you need to know some information. You need to know uh, what their filing status. You need to know um, their, their taxable income. And if you know those things, then you can look up how much tax is owed it considers all the different tax brackets and so forth. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of an estimate based on the midpoint, okay? Uh, for higher income, anything over $100,000 for taxable income, you, you can't use the tax tables anymore because the tax tables only go up to 100000 you use a tax rate schedule, which tells you a formula to calculate uh, based on how much uh, you owe on the income below the, ta the current tax bracket plus the tax on the, from the current tax bracket you're in. So there's some examples in your textbook of how to calculate that, and we'll work on that in your homework.